So today we will speak only about, from now on, only about classical trim varieties. So, so let f of c tilde into c uh, <coughs> an etal double covering, right? And c of genus g. Then we had uh, two morphisms, the Jacobian of C tilde to the Jacobian of C. One was the norm of F and the other one was F upper star, considering the elements of the Jacobian as line bundles on C. Okay? And we had with uh, the dual, if we identify by the canonical polarization, JC with the dual of it, and JC tilde with the dual of it, then the norm, the dual of the norm map is actually F upper star. Okay, and then we had two sub-varieties of JC tilde, namely A, which was the image of F upper star, and P, which was the kernel of the norm map, the connected component of zero. This was the prim variety, and I would call one, one calls it also the classical prim variety. Maybe I should. Well, uh, also the only thing we proved, other thing we proved that if you take the, sorry, theta c tilde, the canonical polarization restricted to p, then this is t algebraically equivalent to twice a principal polarization. Why classical prim variety? I mean, maybe I should say a few words about the history. Uh, pr these, these prim varieties were invented or found, investigated by Wirtinger in 1880 in a book of his on theta functions, right? And rediscovered by Mumford in 62, 1962. Uh, Mumford called them prim varieties, and I think actually one should call them Wirtinger varieties because he discovered them. The reason uh, why he called that prim varieties, we will see probably tomorrow, I'm not sure whether I come to that, because the tangent space at the, at the prim variety is the space of prim differentials. Prim differentials are differentials with values in the theta characteristic. And prim, uh, also in the 1880s, wrote a very thick book on these side of kind of differentials. Wirtinger was actually in Munich and Prim was in Würzburg. Prim was not a, not a professor, not, had not a post, he was a privatier as we say. He had a lot of money, his family had a lot of money, the firm still exists. <laughs> and uh, so he did not uh, work for money, he just worked for fun. If you look at his book, it's interesting. I mean, there he sits, you know, like this with a big beard and <laughs> very, you know, uh, very round. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is the history. So, now. If we consider we denote by Rg of 2 the moduli space of etal double covers of curves of genus G. Okay, then we can to every we get a map. Now, uh, well, then the prim variety P, dimension of, so P is P of F for such a double cover F. And the dimension, if, if we have dimension here equal to G of C, then the dimension of P was G minus 1, if you remember, right? So if we start of G plus 1 of 2, genus G plus 1, we get a prim variety of dimension G. Okay? So we get a map into the moduli into, well, the space PG, this is the image of this map, 
in the moduli space of principally polarized abelian varieties of dimension G, namely by just associating to such a double cover the prim variety. Right? So this again is a locally closed subset. We call this the prim map. Prim map. So what does one know about this prim map? There's a theorem proved by several people. Welters was the first maybe. Uh, Karnev uh, at the same time, it was, I don't remember, maybe 72. Then Friedman Smith. Friedman and Smith, so by two people. Roy Smith and then Debar gave four different proofs of the following theorem. Uh, if G is greater or equal to 6, then the prim map is generically injective. Is generically injective. Which means that the function fields are the same. So it's birational onto its image. Okay, uh, I won't say anything about the proof. I mean, there are four different proofs. Those two are non-constructive and those two are constructive, meaning if you have an element in the image here, you can reconstruct the double cover, okay? And all of them are different, different proofs, but difficult, I mean, I cannot say this here. Just, uh, I mentioned this because from this, it follows, of course, that the dimension which we want to see uh, is the same as the dimension of R G plus 1 of 2. Yeah. Okay. And this, I mean, is a, uh, it is a cover of the moduli space, a finite cover of the moduli space of uh, um, uh, curves of of genus G plus 1, because, I mean, a double cover corresponds to just a two-division point, and there are finally many two-division points, right, in the Jacobian. And we know the dimension of this, which is actually 3G. So it's bigger than uh, the modular space of Jacobians. The dimension is bigger, right? And there is one result, which I would like to mention, also not proof, uh, a theorem which is actually already known to Wirtinger, in 1880, which says that Mg is contained in the closure of Pg. So you, if, so you get a bigger space actually than the modular space of uh, Jacobians. Uh, well, maybe, yeah. I mean, the image of Mg in, <coughs> in uh, the modular space of principally polarized abelian varieties here. <coughs> so you get a bigger space where this, the Jacobians are in the locus. Maybe I call this JG, right? I think I call this JG, I'm not sure. Okay, so uh, you get a bigger space where you, uh, of, of uh, principally polarized abelian varieties, which you can study via curve theory. Okay, and that's what we're going to do now for the rest of the talk. Okay, so the first thing is what we have to investigate is how many components does it? We, we took here as the, uh, the, the prim variety was the connected component of zero. The first thing is how many components does it have? So and this is the first proposition. So kernel of NF consists of two connected components actually P we call this P which is a connected component of zero the prim variety and P1 the others is called P1 okay this we want to prove well we consider the following exact sequence A 
A is this image again here, there, image of F upper star, the sub variety. Uh, A, J, C tilde, we call this J A, the embedding, just to have a name for it. So this is contained in here, and the canonical embedding we call J A, and then the quotient. If you have such an exact sequence, one knows that if one takes the dual of it, it stays exact. This I'm not going to prove, but uh, it's an easy argument actually. So dualizing, we get the following: zero, J C tilde, J C tilde, modulo a, dual, then into J C tilde. But this ident we identify with the dual, so. J C tilde here, <coughs> and the dual A, A is also principally polarized, so it identifies with the dual, and we can write here A, but here we have to take the dual of the map, right? So which is pullback by line bundles again. I mean, I did not explain this, but anyway. Uh, so, uh, and this is also surjective, okay? <coughs> Now recall that degree f <coughs> was equal degree of f upper star, as we saw, onto its image was two. Okay, and factorizes as follows. We, so it, it factorizes G C tilde. We have here f upper star, and here we have J C. Then this is J A. Okay, and well, it factorizes over an isogeny of degree two and the embedding. Okay, this we dualize, this diagram we dualize, <coughs> dualizing gives the following, uh, yeah, J C tilde, we have here J A dual, to A. Here we have <coughs> F upper star dual, right from there to there, which we know is uh, F upper star dual is uh, the norm map, right? The dual is the norm map. So we get the norm map onto JC. And here, well, this I write because I want to make a bigger diagram like this. And here we get G hat. Right? First of all, so the, uh, I mean, the prim variety was the kernel of the norm map. Kernel of the, well, the connected component of the kernel of the norm map. Right? So the connected, co uh, since this is an isogeny of degree two, this is also the connected component of this map. So we get P here. Yeah, should I write this? I mean, uh, we have, yeah, P is, a, well, maybe here I write, P is actually the kernel of J A hat by this argument because this is an isogeny. The kernel, the connected components are the same then. Okay, so we have this here, so we have P here. Then this, uh, the norm map is surjective, so G hat is also surjective. Uh, then we know that this is of degree 2, so here we have z modulo 2z as a kernel, okay? And here we have the kernel of, where we want to, want to see uh, the number of components, okay? Now, this diagram, uh, by, by serpent lemma, you get, that, uh, you get this here. And then you see you get a connect. Uh, you get here. Uh, sorry, this is not correct. Here you get get the p by the serpent lemma. Okay, right. Uh, so you get this exact sequence here by the serpent lemma, and you see that this has two connected components because this is connected, and here is that rule two z. This proves the theorem. Okay, uh, the proposition. Okay. <coughs> So now our aim is to distinguish P and P1 in terms of line bundles, right? 
I mean, P and P1 are the elements of it we consider as line bundles. They are in the Jacobian on C tilde, and we, they are line bundles, I mean, right? Okay, for this we need some, uh, no, uh, some definitions. So, a theta characteristic is on C tilde is by definition, uh, well, I call this kappa tilde, an element in pick of C tilde whose square is the canonical bundle. This is by definition a theta characteristic, okay? And kappa tilde is even if and only if H0 of kappa tilde is congruent 0 mod 2. If H0 of this is even, if H0 is odd, it's called an odd theta characteristic. Similarly, similar notation for C, theta characteristics on C. Okay? Now, the important thing is for the rest of today, we fix a special theta characteristic. Fix an even theta characteristic, kappa tilde on C tilde, such that kappa tilde is a pullback of the theta characteristic on C for some theta characteristic, maybe I abbreviate this, abbreviate this, kappa on C. Of course one has to show that this exists, right? But, uh, well, I don't, I'm not going to prove this, but one knows the set of the number of theta characteristics one knows the number of even theta characteristic and one knows the number of pullbacks of theta characteristic and just using the numbers you see that there's a uh, non-empty uh, non intersection. I'm not going to give the numbers here because, uh, well, it's too, yeah, this, uh, by this you learn so not so much, okay? So this is here. This we fix for the rest of today and maybe even some of tomorrow, <laughs> okay? And then one has the following theorem. Theorem two. <coughs> theorem two. One was the theorem yesterday, I think. <coughs> P is the set of line bundles, kernel of NF, such that H0 of L tensor kappa tilde is even, congruent 0 mod 2, and P1 is the other component, such that H0 is odd. This is a theorem of Mumford. Actually, no, it's a theorem uh, proved in 1964, I guess, by, uh, at the same time by Atiyah and Mumford. Atiyah gave the proof, uh, uh, complex analysis proof, I mean with uh, differential equations, and uh, Mumford gave a proof, the proof which I'm going to give you now, okay, which is algebraic geometry proof. So let's prove this. Oh, everything is gone. So, proof. In the first part, we prove that the parity, the parity 
of H0 of L tensor kappa tilde is constant on P and P1. For this, we use another theorem of Mumford, which he actually proved for this, actually, uh, but which I'm not going to prove. Theorem again of Mumford in this paper. The proof is not very difficult of this theorem, but I won't give it because of uh, time, right? So, uh, more general proof. Let X in S be a family of smooth curves. I don't write smooth of genus G over S and S connected over S and S connected and E a vector bundle on X a vector bundle on S with a non-degenerate quadratic form degenerate quadratic form say Q of E in omega on the relative canonical bundle so this <coughs> for every so for every uh, vector space here taking I mean uh, vector bundle taking a fiber here you have a curve and then for every vector you, you get a quadratic form on, 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 this, on this vector bundle uh, and the values, if you vary the values, you, get, you end up here, okay? Uh, then, if you have this, then <coughs> the parity of H0 of ES, now this is a small s, meaning the fiber over a point S, right, is constant on S. <coughs> the proof is not very difficult, I could give it here, but it uses a exercise of Bourbaki, which um, uh, nobody knows, but uh, but uh, interesting exercise. And uh, yeah. But I won't, won't give this. But we have to, uh, in order to prove the theorem there, we have to uh, find a quadratic form, right? So for every L in kernel of norm map, we define, a, first of all, a quadratic form, tick form, F lower star L on this, this is a vector bundle of rank 2 because F is of degree 2, uh, F lower star L into OC, just without uh, values, right? First of all, note that OC is actually, well, norm F L, this is 0, and if I pull back F upper star, and then I have OC tilde here, a mistake here. And on the other hand, we know that this is 1 plus yota. Yota was the involution. Okay, so this is L tensor yota upper star L. Okay, by definition of, uh, by, by lemma 1 was yesterday, right? Okay, <coughs> so for any open <coughs> and halt in, in C open, and <coughs> sigma sigma prime in gamma u u f lower star l, which is actually the same as gamma uh, f to the minus one of u uh, l. <coughs> the section sigma tensor yota upper star sigma prime is contained in f gamma f to the minus 1 u o c tilde <coughs> because the line bundles are tensor up to o c tilde okay so we have this and uh, yeah <coughs> then let norm be the norm map of the function field usual norm map which we know is uh, since it's a quadratic extension is uh, non-degenerate
So one knows that uh, so let norm and m be of the function field actually k is complex numbers here but this is uh, c tilde here into k of c the usual norm norm map of function fields which is non-degenerate quadratic form actually so uh, we know so this gives that norm of sigma tensor yota upper star sigma is contained in gamma u o c so we get a non-degenerate quadratic form so get a non-degenerate because this norm map is non-degenerate quadratic form form b prime of f lower star l into o c Okay, so we tensor this with kappa. <coughs> Tensoring with kappa, our kappa there, of above, gives a quadratic form B of F lower star L tensor kappa into kappa squared. Well, because it's a quadratic form, you get if you tensor by kappa, you have to you get here kappa squared because it's a quadratic form okay but kappa star was omega c okay since this construction varies with the if you vary the double cover it varies with the construction varies with it you get actually what you want you get the quadratic form of the family okay so in this way we get a quadratic form on the family which we want okay And this implies the assertion since so we have to show that this is actually uh, where's the theorem where's the th oh there no yeah the parity of this we have to show that this is constant so we know that the h zero of this is constant okay on the fibers but we do well we have to show that this is the same so since h0 of f lower star l tensor kappa which is constant on the fibers is h0 of well f lower star of f upper star l tensor kappa oh now i'm running out of space which isn't good okay now we take the projection formula maybe yeah equal to this is not good here what do we do well i need only one more <laughs> so which is equal to by the projection formula this is equal to h0 of l tensor f upper star kappa by the projection formula and f upper star kappa was kappa tilde right this is the, the assumption there so this number is constant on the fibers Okay. Second step we have to show Second step there exists an L in kernel of NF such that h0 of l tensor kappa tilde is equal to 1 okay so proof actually here I'm cheating a bit but I, I'll tell you where so let some p nu nu from 1 to 2 g minus 2 be a canonical divisor in the linear system of uh, omega c okay for all so for all p nu let p nu tilde be a pre-image right in c tilde such that with the property f of p nu tilde equal to p nu then we consider norm f of o c tilde of some nu equal to 1 to 2 g minus 2 p nu tilde 
tensor kappa tilde to the minus one. Kappa tilde to the minus one. Okay? So where do I have brackets like this? Okay? So what is this? This is norm f of this, tensor norm f of this. Okay? Norm f of this is by definition just by the choice is just this sum of p nu. So norm f of this is just uh, omega c. Right? By choice here. Okay? Uh, tensor norm f of f upper star, well this was f upper star kappa to the minus one so we get this here and uh, uh, yeah norm f upper star norm f by lemma one was multiplication by two so we get this is omega c tensor kappa to the minus two okay which is trivial so this line bundle here L is contained in the kernel of the norm map, right? Contained in kernel NF and has with H0 of <coughs> which H no with L tensor kappa tilde equal to if we tensor this with kappa tilde, we get an effective divisor. We get this is OC tilde of some new well some I over new p nu tilde, so h0 of this is positive, which implies that h0 of L tensor kappa tilde is greater or equal to 1. Could be 2, but with an argument which I won't give, it takes me a little bit too long, you can even see that there is 1 with h0 equal to 1, right? Uh, I mean there are always uh, always line bundles of degree g minus 1 which h0 is equal to 1 but here we are have special line bundles which are in the fiber so one has to show something with this um, is a bit cheating here so I say this uh, implies 2 but this is uh, not quite complete actually but uh, I don't want to give the argument then finally oh, maybe I go on here Finally, the third step, we have to show that P is actually contained in the set of line bundles such that H0 of L tensor kappa tilde is even. But this is easy. We only have to show that there is one line bundle such that this H0 is even. Uh, this is clear since OC tilde is in P, the trivial bundle. So the trivial bundle, uh, there we have here H0 of kappa tilde, but by assumption this was even. This was an even tetra characteristic. So this is clear, okay? So this proves the uh, uh, theorem. This is uh, Mumford's original proof, actually. In, I think it's in the paper on tetra characteristics on Algebraic curves. Sorry? Maybe I wrote the, uh, the P is reducible. T, yeah, P is two components we have, yes. P was defined as the connected component containing zero. So it's irreducible. As an abelian variety, is the same. It has not, uh, you know, sub variety. Is oh, not. P1. P, well, it's a translate. We have, so we have shown that. There are two components, and the other is the translate because we had this exact sequence. If well, it's not on the board anymore. I'm so wondering because uh, if we strap pigeons, sorry, if we strap step strap by the global sections, and P contains the global section is one zero two four. So how can it zero two four? Yeah, yes, it, yes. It, is, it consists of. Uh, kind of, uh, I no, I mean that's what we proved. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> right? I don't understand what you. What's the question actually? Uh, okay. I mean P one. If you tensor with with an element there, you get from P to P one, 
and this gives you an isomorphism. You can give, right? You tensor with a line bundle in P1 with P, then you are in P1. I mean, okay? So this gives you that the two components are isomorphic. Isomorphic, actually, yes. The one is not, uh, one is not an abelian subvariety because it doesn't contain zero. If you choose a zero there, then it's also an abelian subvariety, then you have a different zero. <laughs> okay. Sorry? In the proof, the man degeneracy Sorry, I didn't. Ah, because because the uh, um, this is the norm map is non-degenerate of a covering of uh, a separable covering of degree two norm map is non-degenerate. This gives you non-degeneratives, right? Norm map is non-degenerate, and this the, the ma this map here comes from non-degeneracy. And then it stays non degenerate, you just tensor by a line bundle. Right. So, now we can investigate uh, another question, another problem now. Recall the canonical Titter divisor, which, was, which is in general called G tilde minus 1, W G tilde minus 1. Uh, this was a definition by, I think, Andre Weil which is the image of C tilde G tilde minus 1, the symmetric product G tilde minus 1 times, in the pick G minus 1, G tilde minus 1, of C tilde. Right, by just, you know, associating P1 tilde plus plus P G minus 1 tilde into the line bundle. Okay, and this is uh, by Riemann a divisor, by Riemann-Roch a divisor, which we had yesterday already. So now we take our theta characteristic, the special one we choose before. So this is actually, yeah, this is contained in here. A divisor in here and well from for this we use Riemann singularity theorem which I might uh, recall here Riemann singularity theorem which says for all L in pick G tilde minus 1 of C we have that the multiplicity of W G tilde minus 1 at the point L is actually H0 of L. You find this in the book of Abarello, Cornell by Griffiths Harris. Okay. This we are going to use. Now we define the theta divisor. Theta tilde in JC tilde. JC tilde is line bundles of degree 0. Here we have line bundles of degree G tilde minus 1. So we can, but if we tensor with the inverse of the Titter characteristic, we get something here. So we define this by uh, by J C tilde by theta tilde W G G tilde minus one minus kappa tilde. So tensorize with my uh, right writing this additionally uh, tensor with the inverse of this is minus. Okay, with kappa tilde as above. Okay, then the next theorem is, okay, here. So maybe not here because we need this. Maybe here. Theorem 3. That first, there exists a theta divisor xi 
on P such that yota JP, JP was the canonical embedding, JP upper star theta is actually equal twice C as divisors. Okay? And this is also, I mean, everything is due to Mumford. This also is due to Mumford, except for the most of the proofs. But Mumford had different proofs because, because he was an arbitrary characteristic, different from two. So you have different proofs and some uh, on over complex numbers. Uh, everything I, I show you is uh, arbitrary characteristic valid, but for complex numbers it's easier. So second, P1 is contained in theta in theta, yeah. So theta is that one, okay? So we have to prove this. Two is an immediate consequence of theorem three, of theorem, theorem two, right? Because, uh, yeah, this was odd, the uh, H0 was odd and then, uh, 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 so two uh, is in, immediate consequence of theorem 2 because this was odd and the uh, odd numbers uh, positive uh, non-negative odd numbers are all greater or equal to 1 theorem 2 and Riemann singularity theorem okay so we have to prove of course so have to prove one Riemann singularity theorem implies that J P upper star theta tilde P contained, I forgot a tilde there I guess, uh, yeah. So this is the tilde, we, the special tilde. There. Okay, theta tilde cons uh, consists entirely of uh, multiple components. Okay. On the other hand, and if psi tilde is an arbitrary divisor, is an arbitrary divisor defining the principal polarization, defining the principal polarization on P, then by theorem 1, 1, by theorem 1, and the first, well, I, uh, we, we see that, uh, we, we proved that JP upper star theta tilde is algebraically equivalent to twice C tilde. This was theorem 1, okay? That this, the, the restriction of the polarization is twice the polarization. So this is still arbitrary. Uh, arbitrary uh, divisor, but since the homomorphism phi 2 psi tilde of p into p hat is surjective, because this is always an exogeny. I mean, if this is a polarization, then this is also a polarization of type 2, 2, 2. Then this is an isogeny, is an isogeny. It's surjective, I wanted to write. It's surjective. There exists an X in P such that, well, we have that J, P, upper star. Uh, theta tilde minus 2 psi tilde is actually phi 2 psi uh, of x and this is actually psi tilde of x and this is actually 2 t x upper star by definition psi tilde minus 2 psi tilde by definition algebra uh, equivalent okay so we get, since this is the same, that this is equivalent to this. On the other hand, this is, uh, consists entirely of multiple components. Then we have to show that one, well, uh, we define xi, our xi, by this here. So define D 
define the Xi we want to be Tx upper star Xi tilde. Right, then we know, then we have that Jp upper star theta tilde is linearly equivalent to Xi, which says this here. Right, and now uh, since this contains, uh, is, uh, consists entirely of multiple components, this has also to be a double, double, right? And then you show that this is contained in this and you get equal. So this implies here, I'm cheating a little bit, but uh, I don't want to be too precise. So this implies actually that they are equal as divisors, sorry, as, uh, yeah, as divisors, okay? So this So we get a corollary singularity. Now we are interested in the singularities of the theta divisor. Singularities of this well, now we fix this Xi here, which we choose there always, right? We fix the theta characteristics and we fix Xi now. It is actually equal to the set of X in P. Well, maybe I should write L in P because I need, right? L in P, well, uh, but if you look at, at points, I mean, maybe I should write X. Later, these points will be line bundles, uh, but here maybe I write it like that. Uh, the set x of x in p with the multiplicity of theta tilde of x is greater or equal to 4 union set of x in p such that the multiplicity of x is 2 of uh, theta tilde is 2 and then also the tangent space of x at p is totally contained in the tangent cone of x in uh, of x in theta tilde. Okay. So here maybe I should write T C x of theta tilde is the tangent cone. Of theta tilde at x. Okay, so this is a union. Well, proof is relatively short now from one of this theorem there. Where is it there? One it follows for all x in psi which is contained in P intersect theta tilde and we contain it in theta tilde is of even dimension is of even uh, I mean every x here is of even multiplicity by Riemann's singularity theorem okay because h0 of that is even and uh, even multiple. In particular, all x in the singular locus of Xi, we have x is in the singular locus of theta, tilde. In terms of tangent cones, this means either the tangent cones intersect the tangent space transversely, in which case you have that the multiplicity is greater or equal to 4, right, because you have twice the, the divisor there, or it is, of e, e, or it is uh, equal to 2, but then you have that the tangent case is, has to be contained in here, right? So this gives the proof, actually. This gives the assertion, actually, right? I don't write the, uh, the details here. Okay, but this, you know, so you have certain singularities here and certain singularities here, and these singularities, which was noticed by Mumford, play an important role. They are called exceptional singularities, and these are the stabling singularities. That's the next uh, 
definition I'm going to do, oh, I've still some time. Definition X in Sing Xi is called stable if and only if the multiplicity multiplicity of X in theta tilde is greater or equal to 4 and is called exceptional this definition is also due to Mumford if uh, otherwise Okay. You see later that on a gener general curve there are no exceptional uh, divisors. I'll prove this, but probably tomorrow. But uh, what does it mean uh, we changing the set of case? Sorry. So here we fix the set of case, but if we changing the set of case, then it's true. Ah, if you, you, well, we need only uh, well, we get the same actually, right? Because yeah, independent. In well, independent because H yeah. Yeah, independent of, but we have to have our choice, right? If whenever you take this, you, you know that P there is even and on P1 it's odd for any of those theta characteristics which we chose. I mean, where one theta characteristic, has, is, theta characteristic above is even and it's a pullback from below. That's important. We need it even later also. Okay. So uh, these play a special role because, you know, uh, they provide special line bundles of low degree on C, which we'll see now. This is also due to Mumford. Pro next proposition. L, well now I call the, uh, before I called the, the points here, I called X, but they are considered as line bundles. Now I call always L, this was because we talked about multiplicity and then well, what is the multiplicity of a line bundle? I mean, this, so I wrote X at that. But now I change notation again. L is uh, the line bundle in sync Xi, considered as a line bundle on, maybe I write, considered as a line bundle on C tilde is exceptional, suppose this is exceptional, is exceptional if and only if L tensor kappa tilde, which was you know the one we, which has even H0, right, is uh, actually of the form F upper star M tensor OC tilde of B. With M in peak of C, C and H0 and H0 of M equal to 2 and be an effective divisor on C tilde and be positive on C tilde. Okay? Uh, this is also, I, I mean, everything I, I'm, I'm uh, proving here is due to Mumford almost everything actually. Uh, also in his paper Prim Varieties. Okay, let's prove it. But actually there the proofs are a bit different and more complicated. Right. This proof here uses a theorem, a generalization of Kempf, Kempf of Riemann singularity theorem, right? Which uh, you find also in Arbarello, Cornell by Griffith Har Griffiths Harris, page 240, if you want to look at it, right? Uh, in, in fact, it's a little bit more general as I will use it, but anyway, I have to quote it because uh, this is a. Uh, maybe, well, yeah. Well, uh, maybe I can. Well, I write Kempf theorem. Actually, Kempf's theorem is a little bit more general, but anyway. Notation as above. 
I write it only in our case. Suppose L in JC tilde, which is actually peak zero of C tilde, with H0 of L tensor kappa tilde equal to R greater equal to 1. Let S1 up to SR be a basis of H0 of L tensor kappa tilde. And let T1 up to TR, same R here, be a basis of H0 of L to the minus 1 tensor kappa tilde. Why has this the same dimension? By, by uh, well, this is of degree g minus 1, and then you know g tilde minus 1 here. Then you know that h1 is equal to h0, and this is h1 by cell duality. Okay, so they have the same dimension. Then, uh, then consider, consider uh, h0 of omega c tilde as the tangent space at L of JC tilde. Cotangent space, sorry. Cotangent space, as a cotangent space. Of JC tilde at L. Oh, why may I show you? Of JC tilde at the point L. Okay, then Kempf gives a div. Uh, gives a, an equation for the tangent cone. And that's what we need because uh, we are uh, dealing here with the tangent cone. Okay? Then determinant Si tensor Tj equal to zero is an equation for the tangent cone. Is an equation for the tangent cone Well, four I can write here. T C L theta tilde in T L theta tilde in the tangent space. Okay. This is Kempf's theorem in more generality. Even he doesn't. Of course, he, we have here a double covering. You can omit this. This works for every curve, right? There, you don't need the double cover and need don't need the special. Uh, form of the theta characteristic. I mean, this is in more generality. Okay, using this, uh, one proof the theorem, the proposition, but maybe this will take me too long, so maybe I, what I do, I write tomorrow morning before the talk, I write again uh, the corollary and I write again this theorem and then we prove it, okay? Because this would take me maybe 10 minutes or so. Okay, thank you.